Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about the fun 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 but let's face it not cool subject of fluid RAID system flexible RAID storage systems and ultimately RAID systems that allow for mixed drives all in one lovely storage board it's something of a taboo subject in veteran storage circles but there are pros and cons I think a lot of users have to having a RAID group that's made up of different capacity drives it's something that's grown I would say at the prosumer maybe even entering the SMB level in recent years and we're only seeing a a handful of brands actually offer this within their own storage arrays and not everyone does it so a lot of us are wondering why and that's what this video is about we are going to discuss what a flexible RAID storage system is, why it's popular, we're going to talk about how it works, and ultimately why not everyone is doing it. So let's crack straight on with it. Well, and its very definition there, what is a flexible RAID storage system in this context? Well, it's simple. It is a RAID configuration on a NAS system that has got a bunch of different drives over different, a bunch of different capacities. You might have a bunch of twos, a bunch of four TB drives, a bunch of 10 TB drives, and a couple of 20 TB drives. It seems messy as hell, but so nonetheless, some users who have got mixed drives want to do that. Next up, why? Why would anyone want to do that? I would argue very few people ever on day one want to have a mixed RAID storage system. It seems madness and you're right to do so. You want a nice, clean, stable storage setup early doors and the idea of getting this four bay NAS here and putting different drive size drives inside, it seems unstable as hell and that's true. But what if you go for a bigger solution? Something that's got, you know, six, eight, 12 bays of storage and you don't fully populate it on day one a lot of users don't do that and they may go ahead and get a 12 bay device and only put six inside the market an eight bay device and only put four drives inside and not on day one but day 1000 2000 3000 they want to add more storage now they could replace every drive in the array but that take ages and you have to buy every drive whereas adding newer drives available in the future for a lower price and larger capacities being available, it's going to be way more attractive than trying to source repeats of the same drives you bought three to five years ago somewhere on eBay and the like. Now, expanding your storage of these larger drives is appealing and that's one of the main driving forces behind storage arrays that use mixed drives there's other advantages people are talking about about mixed lots and ensuring drives don't come from the same production line i hate seagulls and if there's a development fault but the predominant and growing a demand for flexible raid storage system for capacity has been that about expandability down the road now ultimately in the market there's really two main ways it is done. One way is within Linux storage systems that use traditional RAID, and these are two great examples, Synology with their Synology Hybrid RAID system, and TerraMaster with their T-RAID or T-RAID Plus system. These are systems that not only arrive with support of traditional RAID configurations, which again, you RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and RAID 10, and RAID 50, and RAID 60, all those cluster RAIDs. But on top of that, they also arrive with the ability to have RAIDs made up of mixed drives. However, when they do this, they don't really go into a great degree of detail unless you go through the white paper to see how it's done. And this is how it's done. Hopefully the graphic will be on screen soon. Uh, this is going to be, as you can see on screen, this is an array made up of eight storage drives. In that storage array, we have got four 2TB drives that would have been installed years ago. We've got a couple of 6TB drives that someone probably picked up on Black Friday, and later on, a couple of 10TB drives that were added because they were picked up even later. Now, what happens is, Unlike a normal traditional RAID array where the data is spread across all of the disks and every single drive is classed as the smallest drive in this one RAID array, these flexible RAID storage systems are actually made up of multiple mini logical RAID collections internally. The result is, for example, it will take all of those 2TB drives that exist and it will effectively guard off 2TB of all of the larger drives and make that its own logical RAID internal, like a little mini cluster RAID, if you will. Next, it takes the remaining storage and those six TBs, in this case, four TB, partitions off four TB of the remaining two, two TB drives and makes a second little RAID logical unit there. And finally, the remaining storage area of the largest drives becomes its own little RAID logical cluster, if you will. And you end up with, within an SHR or a T RAID, multiple smaller RAID bundles all under that same umbrella, allowing you to take advantage of larger drives as they are added to the array. You still need to put at least two of the new largest drives in the array for this to work because of that RAID array at the end there needing to cluster it, but nonetheless, that's how flexible RAIDs work. Now, 
The other flexible RAID array that we talk about in the market a lot is from Unraid. Unraid array uses a very different methodology towards parity and it uses a lot more maths. And ultimately, it means with an Unraid array, you could have an Unraid array made up of 20 drives, all of them with completely different capacities. But rather than writing across all the disks in the same way we've discussed this that so far, what happens is as data is written across the drives one by one, only individual drives or in pairs are accessed at any given time and parity is calculated on a simple bit zero or one basis so it does a mathematical calculation of all of the bits on every single drive and then using that if a drive fails it then goes ahead and calculates based on a uh, positive or neg uh, positive uh, odd or even number i should say that the content of the bit or the block on the drive that fails can then be rebuilt from this. I've oversimplified it massively, and even then it still didn't make a vast amount of sense. I will link to Space Invader 1, Ed Rowland's channel there. He goes into a great amount of detail on this. He does it better than anyone else. I'll link to it in, uh, below in the description. In the case of Unraid, the biggest casualty is performance there, because unlike in a normal RAID array with the multiple drives being written, written to simultaneously, that is just not the case in this Unraid calculation. And performance numbers with an Unraid array are just never as good. That's one of the reasons I believe they integrated ZFS as much as they did, not just at its own popularity and stability, but also to have that performance level as well. In the case of SHR and T-RAID, they just don't provide the same level of performance as a traditional RAID does because of the overhead, because of the calculations. We've already talked about little cluster RAIDs within um, the flexible RAID configuration. And ultimately, that's one of the reasons why Synology have made it abundantly clear they will never add Synology hybrid RAID to what they consider business class systems or enterprise class systems because they know that traditional RAIDs offer that extra level of performance and lower resource consumption to compared with that of these more flexible arrays. Which neatly leads into why some brands will not engage with the idea of flexible RAID configurations. Big names being TrueNAS, big names being QNAP and stuff like that, or even Acerstore. Part of it is research and development, of course, in the case of some brands, but also that stability and performance. And some brands just do not see that value in that scaling of storage later on compared with the performance, stability, and lower resource consumption, and let's face it, historical use of traditional RAID configurations and pools that they are already offering. They know you can gradually replace drives in an existing RAID array with larger drives and swap them out. It's not ideal compared to that and in terms of cost compared to a flexible RAID storage array, but it still gives them something to offer. Again, Things like BTROFS have made it a great deal easier, hence why BTROFS tends to be found on most platforms that have flexible RAID configurations, but not all. Ultimately, a flexible RAID configuration in terms of long-term storage scalability against cost is a great thing. But mixed storage drives, it has to be said, if you're going for mixed drives, it introduces its own way laying factors. Number one, large capacity drives tend to have a higher performance number. One of the higher performance number reasons being more platters. You may have an array of disks that have very different read and write mechanics internally, and you are relying on all these drives being read and written to simultaneously. So either all of the array write actions and read actions are limited to the slowest or more, most complicated drive, or simply that you just won't really get as greater performance from the NAS in terms of resource consumption because of those calculations. On top of that, you may have drives at different durability ratings and therefore the drives in your array may die at different times. They may have different susceptible values for write activity. There are pros and cons. And therefore I can kind of understand why some brands will not engage with flexible RAID storage arrays. But I wish they did, or at least offered it at certain tiers of their portfolio as some brands have done. But this has been what are flexible RAID storage configurations, the appeal, how it's done, and the negatives behind them as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. There should be an article linked below. And apart from that, have yourselves a bloody great week.